everyone i am dr shrivanala today's topic is thrombosis thrombosis is the process of formation of solid mass called thrombus in circulation from the constituents of flowing blood the solid mass formed in the circulatory system by process of thrombosis is called thrombus etiopathogenesis thrombogenesis is initiated by blood vessel injury which initiates hemostatic repair mechanisms Three primary events predisposing to thrombus formation are virtuous stride that is endothelial injury alteration in flow of blood hypercoagulability of blood endothelial injury role of blood vessel wall an intact endothelium by virtue of its functions maintains normal blood flow an intact endothelium protects the flowing blood from the thrombogenic influence of subendothelium elaborates a few anti thrombotic factors like heparin like substances which accelerates the action of anti thrombin 3 and inactivates some other clotting factors thrombomodulin and anticoagulant converting thrombin into activator of protein c inhibitors of platelet aggregation such as adipase pgi2 or prostacyclin tissue plasminogen activator which accelerates the fibrinolytic activity releases pro thrombotic factors having pro coagulant properties like thromboplastin or tissue factor von willebrand's factor that causes adherence of platelets to subendothelium platelet activating factor and activator and aggregator of platelets inhibitor of plasminogen activator that suppresses fibrinolysis Vascular injury exposes the subendothelial connective tissue like collagen, elastin, fibrinolactin, laminin and glycosaminoglycans which are thrombogenic. These subendothelial tissues play an important role in initiating hemostasis and thrombosis. Injury to vessel wall also causes vasoconstriction of small blood vessels so as to reduce blood loss. Endothelial injury is of major significance in the formation of arterial thrombi and thrombi of the heart. Condition and factors which cause endothelial injury and predispose to thrombogenesis are endocardial injury in MI, myocarditis, cardiac surgery, prosthetic valves, ulcerated plaques in advanced atherosclerosis, hemodynamic stress in hypertension, arterial diseases, diabetes mellitus, endogenous chemical agents such as hypercholesterolemia, endotoxins, exogenous chemical agents such as cigarette smoke. Role of platelets. Following endothelial cell injury, platelets play a central role in thrombosis as follows. Platelet adhesion Platelets in circulation adhere to exposed subendothelial collagen with help of von Willebrand's factor. The canalicular system gets dilated with formation of pseudopods and the cytoplasmic organelles shift the center of the cell. Platelet release reaction. Activated platelets undergo release reaction releasing the platelet granules to the exterior. There are two types of granules released. Alpha granules it contains fibrinogen fibrinectin platelet derived growth factor platelet factor 4 and cationic proteins dense bodies it contains adp ionic calcium serotonin histamine and epinephrine phospholipid complex platelet factor 3 gets activated as sequel to platelet activation and release reaction and plays an important role in the intrinsic pathway of coagulation platelet aggregation adp following its release brings about aggregation of additional platelets thus forms a temporary hemostatic plug this plug is stabilized by fibrin thrombin and thromboxane a2 role of coagulation system coagulation system is involved in thrombus formation by converting plasma fibrinogen into solid mass of fibrin coagulation mechanism is brought about by an intrinsic and extrinsic pathway These mechanisms are regulated to keep the blood in fluid state by protease inhibitors like antithrombin 3, protein C, C1 inactivator, A1 antitrypsin and A2 macroglobulin. These act on coagulation factors to oppose the formation of thrombin. Fibrinolytic system. It consists of two plasminogen activators, tissue type derived from endothelial cells and leukocytes and urokinase like present in plasma. 
these plasminogen activators converts plasminogen present in plasma into plasmin a potent fibrinolytic enzyme plasmin so formed acts on fibrin to destroy the clot and produce fibrin split products hypercoagulability of blood hypercoagulability of blood brings about following changes in the blood composition increasing coagulation factors like fibrinogen prothrombin factor 7a 8a and 10a increase in platelet count and their adhesiveness decreased levels of coagulation inhibitors like antithrombin 3 fibrin split products conditions where the hypercoagulability of blood is increased are nephrotic syndrome advanced cancers extensive trauma burns during pure perian factors favoring effect of hypercoagulability on thrombosis are advancing age smoking use of contraceptives obesity alter alteration of blood flow axial flow of blood is normal where the most rapidly moving central system central stream consists of leukocytes and red cells slow moving adjacent stream contain platelets and the most slow moving cell free plasma is close to endothelial layer turbulence in the blood flow facilitates formation of atrial and cardiac thrombi stasis of the blood flow initiates venous thrombi even in absence of endothelial injury this is because in turbulence and stasis the normal axial flow of blood is disturbed causing platelets to come in contact with the endothelium moreover turbulence may actually injure the endothelium resulting in deposition of platelets and fibrin even the inhibitors of coagulation fail to reach the site of thrombus resulting in enlargement of thrombus size fate of thrombus resolution the thrombus activates the fibrinolytic system with consequent release of plasmin which dissolve the thrombus completely resulting in dissolution small venous thrombi are completely lysed but not large thrombi this process can be accentuated by administration of thrombolytic substances like urokinase streptokinase especially in the early stage when fibrin is in monomeric form organization if a thrombus is not removed it undergoes organization as follows phagocytic cells like neutrophils and macrophages begin to phagocytose fibrin and cell debris leukocytes and endothelial cells liberate proteolytic enzymes which start digesting coagulum capillaries grow into the thrombus thus fibrovascular granulation tissue is formed which subsequently becomes dense and less vascular and is covered over by endothelial cells this way thrombus is excluded from vascular lumen and is made part of vessel wall the new vascular channels in it may reestablish the blood flow by recanalization this fibrous thrombus may also undergo Hy- hyalinization and calcification propagation the thrombus may enlarge in size due to more and more deposition from the constituents of flowing blood this may ultimately cause obstruction of vessels thromboembolism thrombi in early stage and infected thrombi are quite friable and may get detached from the vessel wall these are released in part or completely in blood stream as emboli which produces effects according to the site of lodgement thank you everyone hope you all like the video please like share and subscribe